Hey guys, and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrids. Since we've had quite a few new people join us throughout the series, I'd like to remind that the entire point of these videos is to offer various prompts and ideas for certain creature hybrids, and to hopefully inspire you, the viewers, to have a go, try some new artwork, perhaps some new genres, new mediums, and overall just to have fun and see what artwork we can all produce. It's been going absolutely fantastically, and for this week's prompt, the shark and lizard, it has gone above and beyond. As of recording this, we are currently at 110 submissions. So it's gonna be a bit tricky to get through everything. But to start things off with, we have this wonderful one by Shunky. Shunky had explained that this was based on one of her own original characters in the past, that she's recently remade and used the shark versus prompt to help redesign her character. And I do absolutely love the overall texturing on this. I really like all the various scales and how each individual scale is also lit up with its own lighting. It just really shows an attention to detail. And I also just really like the overall angle, the composition, the way it's looking up the piercing orange eyes in into the beautifully shimmering water surface and also the little glowing ones behind it. It's a very nice touch. And next up by Polar Mo, we have what I can guess is perhaps a gecko and a whale shark, which is a very, very adorable and rather derpy looking combo. I have to say, the gecko eyes and the whale shark mouth is just an absolutely perfect combination. Not to mention just the pattern and colours themselves. I really like the way that Polar has coloured this in, the larger brush strokes. It just looks really nice and colourful. And next up by Koshok, we have the Lizark made in Spore. I really like the coloration on this one, very nice and vivid sea blue. And I also really appreciate Koshok's attempt to create a custom head and custom claws, as that can be quite tricky. And I think the head in particular is quite nicely done, and I also really like the addition of the gills too. And of course, I'm a big sucker for any of those big frills around the head there. And next up by Abyss Arachnus, we have a couple of sketches of the Goblin Chameleon. I have to admit, a Goblin Shark and a Chameleon is a very clever kind of mix-up because they do both have like these very strange angular faces, don't they? And I think they come together really quite nicely. And next up by Ghost Nika, we have the Giga Bully, which is based on the Giga Monster and Bull Shark. I love the coloration, and I do think it's very fitting as well, since the coloration, as I said, is meant to signify that they are venomous. I think it's very, very nicely done. I really like the definition of the teeth and just a big pair of gums. It's really creepy and starts off quite nice. The, the overall mass to the creature looks like a very large, heavy creature, which again is very fitting for a Giga Monster, plus a whole bull in the bull shark, if you to take it literally. And just the overall composition, the backgrounds, it just everything really comes together very nicely and it just creates a very nice, colourful, but somewhat intimidating piece. And next up by Draculady is a bit of a teaser to a much larger concept that she's working on. And for this, we have the earless monitor lizard mixed with the Xenacanthus and the black tipped reef shark. I really like just how slender and snake like this one is. It's really beautiful. I also just like all of the osteoderms, I can only assume, going along the back and just how they have those little brightly tipped brown colours. And one thing that Draki always does so nicely is the contrasting colours. I like how it's got this very dark, earthy, muddy kind of colour scheme, but contrasted by a bright white belly and the nice pale mohawky tail. And I also really want to compliment the tail. I do think that shark tail is the colour thing that can be very hit or miss, and I think Draki here's an absolutely fantastic job, just everything about a shark tail. Very elegant, and I really look forward to seeing what this is a part of. And next up, we have this cutie by Fridge Master 27 I really like the night landscape, and I especially really like the coloration on this, mostly the patterns and how they kind of cross or crisscross to each other. The design of the tail is really nice, and I especially just like all the little spiky dorsal fins on the top and bottom of the base of the tail, as well as the base of the thigh and the base of the elbow, I think. And of course, the sail along the back. In fact, I just like all the additional features on this one just in general. And next up by Sly, we have the Sand Shark and Komodo Dragon. Seeing this one swimming with a juvenile, I gotta say it's just really, really adorable, and I think it just really sets the scene, just makes everything just look so cute, so awesome. I really like the overall just green hue to everything as well, makes for a bit of a change compared to all the blues. And especially just how the gradient actually splashes against a creature, and they're not just kind of hovering in a green abyss, but actually it's submerged into it. Which is a very subtle, but always very effective atmospheric technique. And I also like the white bands on the backs of the hybrids. So next up, we got a duo by Lantern. The first one being their Mega Mouth Chameleon, which the mouth is really, really fitting. It's just really, really good. It's very creepy, but it's really fitting, especially for a chameleon kind of creature. And their other part of this duo is the Longy Corpion, which I bare butchered, which is another fascinating hybrid and just, again, really creatively done. Somewhat creepy, but still just really nice to look at. And Lantern had explained that both species meet up together to travel and juvenile mega mouths that stay with the Longy Corpions until adulthood. Really cool, and like, quite a fitting pair, given the two very drastically different, but very detailed mouth designs. And next up by Fox Women, we have the Saw Shark and Mexican Mole Lizard, with some influence from the Bearded Dragons and Tiger Sharks. 
I really like just a whole very long snake-like body on this one. I really like the tip of the tail. I think it's unintended, but it kind of reminds me of a bit of a Glavida sword, which is just an interesting different touch. And I also really like the addition of the great big sword tooth, which again, I don't think we've really seen any of. The whiskers in particular are a very interesting addition. Not something I'd expect to see at all, but seeing that in conjunction with the big saw mouth is really quite interesting and gives me like quite a few ideas. And next up by Mermaids, we have the frilled shark, gold dust gecko, and a frilled lizard. It uses its pretty and mesmerizing patterns to snatch unsuspecting fish. It can go on land, but only for short amounts of time. I gotta say, all the glowing really gives it like a very sinister appearance, especially the glowing green eyes. The bottom left one just looks... I don't know, it looks kind of cute, but it also looks kind of fearsome, and the top right one just looks kind of uh, very mischievous in a way. It's very interesting, and it's also quite neat to see all the different speckles of colour, especially the red and blue amongst all the green and yellow, and the little yellow spots along the neck as well. And next up by Frozen, we have this humanoid hammerhead lizard. I really like the tail in particular. The nice big spiky tail, like especially just all the stripes in general along the body. The As always, Frozen does a very good job of musculature. He's got, done a very good job of just defining how strong and powerful this creature looks. I also really like all the little fins and frills along the arms and very subtly around the back and neck. And I just want to note, the big uh, puffy neck is a really interesting choice. It just makes me think of like just very large neck muscles. Perhaps it can just swallow big things whole and I think it's a really good touch. Next up by Janan, we have the spore creation, the Pelta Rankosaurus, which is a goblin shark and irradiated iguana. Definitely a kaiju. I think that Janan has done a fantastic job on this one. I really like the overall proportions on this. I also really like the ridges going down the side of the, um, the, side of the creature's body. And also just the big Zilla-like spikes along the back. And the face, I gotta say the face is really quite interesting. There's just a lot of work has gone into the face. I like how it's not immediately attractive. I don't know what it is. I always find like creatures that have like this really big nose and a very weak underbite, I find just look kind of weird. But I think it really complements this creature quite nicely. Just a great big cresting along the nose and head and also just all the little bits of detail around the eyes as well. It really comes together very well and really does kind of sell that whole irradiated appearance quite nicely. And coming up next by Swacky Tracks, we have the Gekin, a leopard gecko and great blue shark. This is adorable. <laughs> this is just really cute. I think it speaks a little innocent, shy expression it has. I just think it's really, really cute. I also just really like the colors more than anything else. I think the colors is what really sells this to me. I think just a mixture of having a bright white, nice bright cyan, and a bit of a pale yellow. It's really nice, but also little splotches of sort of like a darker yellow, maybe browny gold, really helps offset it and prevents it from being too smooth and too bright but it gives like a bit of a bit of muddledness i think the color choice really complements it and coming up next by little theropod is a frill shark sand tiger shark goblin shark marine green iguana armadillo lizard alligator monitor with a little bit of mosasaurus and finally a black monitor they also added a cool feature where it can tuck his arms and legs behind the coverings to allow it to become more aerodynamic for swimming this is badass. This is extremely well thought out. The coloration is incredible. I like how the coloration is very, very subtly a bit of a rainbow. It's just very, very rich. You can just spot a bit of hue from every color on the rainbow here, especially around the spikes along the back of the tail and also just a little bit around the midsection of the body. I think the fact that its arms and legs are so armored it can be tucked in for aerodynamics is fascinating and it looks really cool as well. And I just love all the scales. I just love all the scales, all the dots, all the markings everything i think little theropods has done an absolutely beautiful job just illustrating it entirely just so detailed so rich of color and lighting such a really unique and clever idea and i almost missed it the teeth coming out on the top left there that is very very creepy and yet it's still very believable this is an absolutely badass piece and next up we have nick with this adorable pale green one now fortunately i didn't mention which creatures were involved in this one so i can only guess perhaps a basking shark and perhaps some kind of gecko I get the vibe that this is a very large creature, perhaps due to the composition of the page. It just feels like a very large, somewhat choppy kind of creature, which again does make it seem quite cute. I like the colouring texture and just all the little rough brush strokes here and there, especially around the forehead. And I think the mouth comes across very clearly and very nicely defined. And next up by Jenna Pothier, we have the Basilisk Thresher Hybrid, which is diving in the water to swim with some pink dolphins. This is awesome. I really like how it's kind of captured mid-motion, mid-action. It just gives a lot more life to the creature and you can really just capture a bit dive I really like how the scales, first how the scales vary just in design, especially around the legs, the midsection of the body, the neck, and of course in contrast to the belly, the tail, and the head. But I also like how in the midsection and the back of the neck, how the, how the scales are much larger, more greater osteoderm kind of like design, but how they have these little lighter spots here and there. It really just breaks the whole thing apart, gives it a bit of an armored texture. 
and it just makes the entire creature feel more dynamic. And I also just want to compliment, I really like the eye. The eye itself is really, really cool. Next up by Taros, we've got the Hollow Mask Shalizard, which is a hybrid between a common chameleon and lantern shark. On the left, the thing that really gets me here on the left is how wide the creature is, because I imagine it being wide, it probably also being somewhat flat as well. It just gives it like a very bulky, very structural kind of vibe, which I really do like. Not to mention just all of the very well-defined scales and structure to the creature, very well lit up and shadowed. Also the face, again, very well constructed. And on the top right hand corner, the little red spots there are quite interesting. I guess it is part of chameleon, so it makes sense it has some kind of threat display. It's really interesting to see the big red sections on the upper right. And then on the bottom right, we can also see it attacking something in the water with its big extend extendable tongue. And next up by Maver, I don't really know how to describe this one other than that I just love it. <laughs> like, I want to say, is it a lizard riding a shark? Or is it like a bit of a shark lizard on a shark? I don't know, I just really, really like it. And can I just compliment, the laser on the top of the shark is really incredibly made. Like, extremely well done and very effective. Also, a bit of the armor or like the uh, little torpedoes on the back of the shark as well to prevent it forward. And also, the, can I just say the composition as well? Like, the composition of the shark just looks very large and bulky. And just the overall size of the creature really comes together nicely. But of course, the humor, the idea. It's original, it's fantastic, it's really well executed, especially for a vanilla sport creation. This is without mods, you've got to keep that in mind, this is no mods. So that just really adds even more to how impressive this one is. <laughs> it's a lovely idea, and I think it made us done a fantastic job. And next up with another sport creation, Janana returns with their Peltorankosaurus, but this time in mecha form. I really like the eyes, the eyes just really stand up to me. I also like the construction of the body. I do think that the body should be just a little bit larger to compensate for the large legs, but I do still like the technique used to make these segments in the body itself. And not to mention just all the armor in general, but I think the head is definitely my favorite part. And next up we have this really badass looking one by Dinagris, the mighty Futa Sumo, which is an aggressive gliding reptile closely related to field lizards that bears a slight resemblance to fresher sharks and goblin sharks. Futasumo are nomadic reptiles. They are seen about everywhere, excluding deep sea, ranging from shallow sea to volcanoes to even a temperature to below zero. Futasumo are extremely aggressive and territorial towards animals their size and will eat about any flesh they can get their fangs on. Very creepy, very intimidating. I really, what I really like about this is just the way that you got the two different angles there of it flying at the top there. We got the one where it's just walking on the ground down below, and it's really cool just to see how the frill expands, like the two different angles on the top there. It just gives it so much more life and depth to the creature. It really shows a really solid design idea. Not to mention a very unique wing design as well. The face also is really intimidating. I love the big spikes just coming out from the nose and chin. And how the eye is just very shadowed as well. And this is definitely something I could imagine causing quite a bit of damage. So the description really does match it perfectly. As always, another beautiful sketch by Dino. And next up by Cannibal Light, we have the Varanus Inguinus, which is of a frilled shark and water monitor. There's a very big description associated to this one, so I do recommend pausing to have a read. But what I would like to say about it is that I just really love the overall design. I love just how aquatic looking the tail is. It's a beautiful long monitor lizard design, but the tail is just beautiful. I really love the definition and texture of the gills as well. Not to mention the stripes along the back too. The whole thing just in terms of composition fits really nicely and just looks like a very elegant creature. And I must say, I really do like all the references to the previous hybrids. Very nice touch. And next up by Guggenheim, we have the Devil Head. A thorny devil and hammerhead. This is one spiky looking dude. Looks very, very powerful. I really like the tail, actually. The tail is, I can imagine it being maybe quite rigid. I look at it thinking it's rather whip-like and just imagining all those spikes and armor on a whip-like tail. Can you only imagine like the kind of damage that would inflict? I also really adore all the texture on the spikes and osteoderms, especially the light from the water surface shimmering against it. And I also think that catching a mid-hunt, thrashing in the sand and kicking up all the sand up is such a wonderful choice, very atmospheric, again just gives it much more life. And the spiky tail, which I just noticed now, the spiky tail is terrifying. Uh, spiky tongue, excuse me, is terrifying. And the entire thing is absolutely fantastic, another really solid concept idea. And I think Guggenheim's just done a fantastic job illustrating it. And next up by Mermaid, we have the Jesus Lizard and Lantern Shark. Unlike their previous submission, this one can walk on land, but it's rare. They are natural prey to their previous submission, the Abomination. They are harmless and prefer to hide in kelp. Meet the Kelp Shark. This is absolutely adorable, really, really cute. I love the great big eye. It really sells just like the overall more cute appearance. 
But again, another one of the log glowing green. So it kind of makes me wonder, like, is this some kind of algae? Or some kind of effect? Or just the way that the water is? Or is it there for a purpose? Because the green glowing always feels like a little bit eerie to me in a way. Though I do like the darker colour scheme on this one, and I especially just really like the very pale little leaf-like fins. And next up by Shunky, we have a ZBrush model. The first thing that really strikes me about this model is the material used. I think the material is a fantastic choice because it really gives the entire creature a very kind of shimmery texture, which I'd say is absolutely perfect for what I can only assume is an aquatic or maybe amphibian design. I also really like the scale definition around the lips and jaws, the big scary teeth, the adorable and very piercing glowing orange eyes, and the overall proportion of the creature is awesome, especially just that great big muscular tail. This is overall really cool looking, but as I said, it really is a coloration and a material that really sells it to me. I think it's a fantastic combo, and Shanky, I think you've done an absolutely amazing job. And next up by Hazella, we have a gecko and a salmon shark, which is adorable! Has! I didn't know you could do adorable like this! This is from our resident kaiju artist, and this is so cute! It gives me a bit of a really old-fashioned kind of cartoon vibe. I think it's the face and the way the mouth is drawn. I really love it, but I also love how it has a little stray too far away from his usual kaiju design, so you can really tell with like all the different spikes, just a lot of spikes and ridges all over the place, it gives it just a much more depth, and I think the whole thing just comes together really, really nicely. I also just really like the big old paws as well, and again, the face. The face is amazing. And coming up next by Elmdale Arts is their horned lizard and whale shark. I really like how sketchy this one is. It might look a bit messy, but I think it looks actually quite eerie. Almost a little bit sinister, perhaps. It kind of makes me think of a... I want to say, like, maybe even, like, a cave drawing. Or just, like, an ancient interpretation of, perhaps, you know, like, a long-lost titan. It's really cool. I really like the vibe it overall gives. I also really like the design itself. It looks very, very spiky. It's got a lot of stripes and spots along the midsection of the body and the arms. And it looks like it's got very large, powerful jaws as well. And I think the whole thing just looks, like I said, very powerful and really kind of eerie. And next up by Color Crow, we have the Five Lion Skink and Saw Shark. This one's absolutely adorable. I really love the coloration on this one. I just especially like where the colors are placed, in particular the subtle white outline around the creature, which draws it out from the background. And the background just really makes it pop as well, the big contrasting colors. I also really like all the stripes, both the blue stripes and the big powerful gray bands along the creature. Everything's just so well defined, so very clean and precise, and it all creates a very solid looking design. The overall style itself is also quite familiar. I can't put my finger on why I recognize it, but the familiarity also just makes it, you know, that much more appealing. And coming up next by Somi, we have the Lantern Shark and Armadillo Lizard. This is a pretty badass combination Armadillo Lizard with all the little glowing bioluminescence of a Lantern Shark. I really love just how every major scale is glowing. It's just such a clever combination and also the mouth and eyes as well just how they glow in their own independent way whereas there's little specks of light everywhere else the eyes and mouth just seem to have a very large bioluminescent surface the whole thing looks a bit spooky a bit dark and eerie but the lighting is just really beautiful and the color palette complements it perfectly and next up at elephant dog we have a hybrid of a mosasaur baryonyx komodo dragon and goblin shark a very badass sounding combination of creatures but i have to admit the design itself to me just looks a little bit cute i think it could be the proportions and how it's got like a bit of a snake like almost kind of gecko design but i do find it quite cute despite the big intimidating spikes both on the snout and on the back i like all the defined scales especially around the back legs the forearms and the body and also that big intimidating tail as well and next up by human face we have what seems to be that one scp creature you, you all know what it is i can't remember the top of my head but it does remind me of that one scp creature and you know what i'm actually surprised i've not seen that more often in this prompt either way though it looks really good the melting face is very effective and also of course quite creepy what i really like though is all the little subtle scales around the shoulders the elbows the fins the side of the body the scales are very subtle but it just gives that very light sense of texture to the creature and you can tell it's a scaly creature and i think it looks really good and it also gives it like a bit of a faux sense of shading too and the overall proportions which would remind me of a skull crawler are again a really nice touch and next up we have another one by shunky which is a submission of draculady's character which is very fitting as that's a lizard, in a costume of a shark, which is also one of Draki's favourite animals. Very adorable, very cute and sincere idea, but also really nicely drawn as well. The entire thing is absolutely adorable. I also just really love the little tail fin at the end of the tail. Also just all the little teeth around the hood of the shark costume and the little plushie as well. The whole thing is just like I said, it's a really adorable idea. It's very kind, very sweet, and again, just 
very, very effective, very well drawn. And next up by Zeppelin King, we've got the Hammerhead Lizard Shark. First things first, all the crackling is really quite eerie. There's a lot of like crackling textures. I can't tell if that's meant to be like some kind of static shock or maybe if there's a bit of coral as well. Either way, it's effective and really draws my eye towards it. I love the head design on the creature. That is very intimidating. Kind of looks like it's got like a big buzz saw as well as a saw tooth. And I also just really like how piercing the orange the head of the creature is compared to everything else. That's a very interesting choice. It's got a very high contrast. I also like all the cyan and a bit of purple as well around the tip of the tail and a very aerodynamic build. And the way it camouflages into the abyss and just all the crackling effects really kind of gives me like a bit of an eerie feeling. And next up by Hazilla, we have the Sharkzilla. Taken from the late Dr. Sarazawa's field notes, they're known to be smaller in terms of body mass, both Sharkzilla, as some colleagues like to call him, and Gujira actually measure up surprisingly equal in length from snout to tail tip. This appears to come down to his thresher-like caudal fin on the end of his already longer than usual tail. Mate, this is badass. What I really like, there's two things that really draw my attention here. First is how all the Godzilla spikes all have a bit of a armored yet still aquatic feel to them. They all just look like very large dorsal fins, just very big and armor plated dorsal fins. And the tail, I love the way the tail curves around and I also really like the way the tail actually obscures some of the design. That's quite a gutsy thing to do, a lot of people are afraid of obscuring their designs like that, but it actually gives it a lot of depth and just a lot of length and just overall really adds to the piece. The entire thing is really bad at design and I really like just the way that has has incorpor incorporated some of these more aquatic features into it. Like I said, especially the dorsal spikes. And next up by Sakasa, we have the Jackson Chameleon and Nurse Shark. Climbing on branches above the water surface, this moderately sized creature searches for fish swimming underneath that it catches with either its long sticky tongue or its limbs while hanging from a branch with its prehensile tail. When swimming, the tail straightens out and works just like the tail of a shark. I absolutely love the texture. I think Sack has done an absolutely fantastic job when it comes to the overall texture and shading on this creature. It looks very bumpy, but the overall colouring looks very, very rich. And the eye as well is also just very 3D looking. It's really quite cool and impressive. And I also like the design itself. I do think actually the overall proportions really fit it quite nicely, especially like that great big chameleon tail. But the dorsal fins just really add so much mass to it and it fits it very, very nicely. And also the big yellow crest and spikes are a nice addition. And next up we have another one by Sommy, the great white shark and Komodo dragon named Bruce. And as Sommy says, no, not the Bruce from Finding Nemo. <laughs> this is, this is cool. What I really like about this, there's a lot of things I can compliment on, so I'll try to be short. Uh, first of all is the tattoo is incredibly clean. It's very hard to make an intricate tattoo design and also when it wraps around the mass of the creature properly. That's incredible. I love all the gold and white outfitting. It's a really beautiful contrast against the rest of the creature. Again, very striking, very, very well designed. The harpoon gun is just badass. The little anvil emblem on the belt as well is a very nice touch. I love just a great big gold necklace. And not to mention the creature itself, the overall design of the creature is just really badass and really effective. It just looks very big, very powerful, really shark-like, and the name Bruce just matches it perfectly. I think that in terms of the idea in mind, I think Sommy has created a very original take on it. And the overall color palette matches it perfectly. And next up at Caliber Life, we have the Chinese Water Dragon, Earless Monitor, and Mako Shark with a bit of Grey Reef Shark. This, the illustration on this one is beautiful. I've really been noticing a very distinct growth in Caliber's drawings recently, and I think this one just really highlights a lot of what I've learned so far. There's just so much shading, so many different layers of light and dark, such as all the bright white scales, especially along the arms and legs. All the great big darker kind of osteoderm spikes going along the body. The darker fin more in the background as well. There's a lot of depth being shaded here, but I just love the variation. Like for what I can only assume is like probably a single pencil, there's just so much variety in shade, color, technique, texture, pressure as well. The whole thing in terms of technique is just beautiful, not to mention the design itself. It's very clean. The spikes along the back and the tail really complement the overall silhouette of the creature. The posture as well is quite cute, but also really makes it stand out. And the entire thing just looks incredibly clean and very, very well done. And next up we've got another one by Ghost Nico. They've explained that they've used their own character which has a shape-shifting quality to create the lit arc, for which includes a lemon shark, tiger shark and iguana hybrids. First thing I want to note is I really like just the design of the neck. It's very subtle but the neck you can see that the skin kind of coils and it's very flexible which I think is a very neat touch. I absolutely adore just all the space texturing on the tail. 
the just amount of depth and stars and nebula and just everything going on there is absolutely stunning. Not to mention, the overall design is really cute, very solid. I also just like the defined rib cage. I don't know what it is. I just think that just really adds a lot more depth to the creature. And not to mention just the face. The face is adorable, and I really like all the white stripes and complementing the creature as well. And next up, we got a small creation by Frostfire the Knick of their Tiger Garko which is a tiger gecko and tiger shark. It's very interesting seeing a much brighter color palette for this one. This one's a very stark contrast to everything else and I really like it, it just makes it stand out more and is also quite fitting of a sport creation. I also think that the overall stance and proportions is also quite unique and rather interesting, but it's also good to see that the hands have that, this great big flippery fingers as well because it still makes it look like a very aquatic. So I can imagine this walking in both land and water being a bit of a amphibian or perhaps like a crocodile with big powerful paddling arms. And I also like the dorsal fins of the head and the tail as well. And last, but absolutely not least, we have Dinus with their monitoring shark. Now that is an absolutely terrifying concept. Obviously based on a monitor, a monitor lizard and a shark, but a monitoring shark? So it chilling while I can assume it's on the top of the cave? That is terrifying. I really like the overall design of it. I also quite like the way it's got this great big kind of armor plating shrouding his head. That's a very interesting touch. I can imagine that being quite effective with camouflage as well. Really hides the eyes and the mouth and such. And the overall thing is just, it's definitely quite intimidating. And I think it's a really cool concept. Right, and there we have it. I apologize if I sounded a little bit rushed by the end of that, but there's a lot to talk about and there's so many more upcoming next. So as always, oh God, you guys, you've made so many absolutely incredible and just unique ideas. I love just how much creativity has been poured into this one, especially all of the descriptions, all the ideas, the thoughts, so much thought process has gone into a lot of the designs and they're all absolutely incredible and I'm so glad you're all having so much fun. Thank you all so, so very much. Now, as always, if you want to submit, although there is a lot, but if you still want to submit some more, you can either on my Discord server, you can email it to me directly, you can reply in the comment section down below with your submission, or you can message me on Twitter and in touch. Anywhere you can get a hold of me is where you can post your submissions. Uh, be warned, the next video might be a bit longer, but I'm going to try my best. As always, thank you all so very much and have an absolutely wonderful day. Cheers.